Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developmental Psychology, DEP 2004. I am Dr. Rivera. Another field of psychology that is often going to be discussed in developmental psychology is behaviorism. Uh, behaviorism founded by John B. Watson. Behaviorists thought that uh, the only way to do real science was through observation and manipulation, you know, modifying the behavior of animals through experiments. And uh, so they differed a great deal from Freud and the psychoanalyst, but their field of psychology is equally as important, even though it is a very different route than psychoanalysis. Now, you guys probably already spoke about classical conditioning and operant conditioning in general. And so I just want to talk briefly about both of them. In classical conditioning, a subject will learn to react to a neutral stimulus, similarly to how they would react to a, an unconditioned stimulus. I'm going to talk about that briefly, give you some uh, versions of that. Um, and in operant conditioning, we modify behavior through rewards and punishments. Now, in classical conditioning, there are always two stimuli and one response. Okay. A stimulus is anything that can be seen, heard, smelled, tasted, or touched. It's a stimulus, something that uh, you sense with your senses. And there are usually or always two stimuli and one response. Um, if we talk about Pavlov's dogs, in Pavlov's dogs, there are two stimuli. The food powder, which you can taste or the dogs can taste, and the bell, which the dogs can hear. Now, we make a decision about which one is neutral stimulus and which one is unconditioned stimulus based on the response. So one of these things will naturally or normally give you the response. For example, food powder naturally or normally will make a dog salivate. Um, the dog doesn't have to learn that. And so therefore, the food powder and salivating to the food powder are your unconditioned stimulus and your unconditioned response. Another way of thinking that is that these are unlearned. Um, they are natural or normal. Uh, the animal doesn't have to learn them. On the other hand, the neutral stimulus does not give you the, um, the response, not naturally at least. Um, a bell doesn't make a dog salivate, not naturally, not normally. But of course, what Pavlov wanted to do was to make the dog salivate to the bell, right? So we want the bell to get the qualities of the unconditioned stimulus. And we do this by pairing them. And so we put them together, ring the bell, give the dogs the food powder. And so the dogs salivate because of the food powder. And you can't do this just once in any normal classical conditioning um, situation, you have to do it over and over and over again. So you ring the bell, uh, give the dogs a food powder, and then the dogs salivate because of the food powder. And again, you do it over and over again. Bell, food powder, dogs salivate because of the food powder. Okay, and so therefore we're still calling this unconditioned stimulus, unconditioned response. But if you do this enough times, eventually that bell is going to take the qualities um, of the unconditioned stimulus. And when it does that, we're going to start calling it the conditioned stimulus. And now that bell is going to give us the salivation because the dogs have learned or have been conditioned to salivate to the sound of the bell, okay? Now, when we talk about operant conditioning, in operant conditioning, we are reinforcing behaviors that we want to increase. 
and we are punishing behavior that we want to decrease. Um, a reinforcement is any stimuli that will increase the behavior. So uh, the best way to think of reinforcements are as rewards, right? It's something that you are happy occurred, and because you want it to occur again, you are more likely to repeat the behavior. Now, reinforcers can be positive and negative. That does not mean good or bad, okay? A positive reinforcer means that we increase the behavior or we reward the behavior by adding something to the situation. Uh, it could be the reward of money or the reward of cake or the reward of a pat on the back or a sticker, right? Because we are adding these things, cake, a sticker, a pat on the back, then these are positive reinforcers. The adding makes them positive and the reinforcer means that they are rewards. Now, negative reinforcers, on the other hand, are still reinforcers, they're still rewards. What makes them negative is that I'm taking something away. And so, for example, if I tell you, you don't have to do your homework today, I give you a, like a homework pass. Well, that homework pass, pass is a negative reinforcer. It's negative because I'm taking something away, the homework. But it's still a reinforcer because you're happy that I've taken away the homework. Now, if I want to stop a behavior from happening, then I have to punish that behavior. And if I punish something enough, I might extinguish the behavior or I might make the behavior extinct. I can also uh, extinguish the behavior by um, not giving you any more reinforcers. So let's say that you are rewarded with a homework pass every time you answer a question in class well. Well, now you're going to be answering questions in class all the time because you want that homework pass. But if I stop giving homework pass for a day, for two days, for a week, you haven't gotten a homework pass even though you have been participating, eventually you're going to learn it doesn't matter how much I participate, I'm not going to get the reward anymore. And a lot of times that will extinguish the behavior. That is, you will stop participating in class because the reward isn't there anymore. Now, there are ways around that. Um, schedules of reinforcement, which you probably went over in general. But just in a quick overview, not rewarding the behavior for a, enough time uh, will also extinguish the behavior. Now, people oftentimes have a hard time with positive and negative reinforcements, positive and negative punishments. So I want to give you a couple of visuals here. Um, in uh, this scenario, uh, we have something that is being subtracted there, right? Um, and if you're subtracting something, we call that a negative. Okay? Now, whatever I subtracted still makes the person happy. This person is glad. And because they're glad, then we're going to call this a reinforcement. What's an example here? Well, let's say you're at the gym. That's the behavior. Okay, You want to go to the gym specifically because you want to lose some weight. Well, if you lose some weight, that's something that has been subtracted, the weight. And sub losing the weight has made you happy. And so therefore, losing weight um, is going to increase your behavior. Um, that negative something minus something, in this case fat, is negative. And the fact that you are happy about it, that makes it a reinforcer. Losing weight is a negative reinforcement. And because it's a reinforcement, we can see there after the equal sign, it's going to increase the behavior. You're going to go to the gym more often. Now, I can also add something that makes you happy. And that is also going to increase behavior. Um, now, what we're going to call this is 
uh, first of all, positive because we're adding something and whatever we're adding is making you happy. And so therefore we're gonna call this a positive reinforcement. For example, you're at the gym again, but now we're gonna add something that makes you happy. Um, you got muscular, right? You like the way you look after going to the gym, right? You gain more muscle, you're looking good. Well, um, looking good or gaining muscle, um, that is going to be something we added, muscle. And so that's gonna be positive and you're happy about it. And so therefore that's a reinforcement. Gaining muscle is a positive reinforcement. And because it's a reinforcement, is going to increase the behavior. Again, gaining muscle is gonna make you want to increase going to the gym. Now, I can subtract something that makes you sad or angry. Um, and this should decrease behavior. Because we're subtracting, we're still gonna call it negative, but now, Whatever we subtracted made you feel bad. And so that is a punishment. So if we go back to our behavior, going to the gym, we're gonna subtract something and whatever we subtract is gonna make you kind of sad. So um, specifically what we're gonna subtract is your sleeping, right? You gotta wake up early to go to the gym and um, that should decrease behavior. Because we're taking away your sleep, um, taking away something, we're going to call that a negative. And because taking away your sleep makes you upset, well, that's punishment. Losing sleep or losing rest, that's a negative punishment. And that's going to decrease the behavior. That is, you're going to go to the gym less. One more here. Um, now we're going to add something, but whatever we add is going to make you upset, okay, or feel bad. Um, and again, because it makes you feel bad, is going to decrease the behavior. Adding something makes it positive. Being upset makes it a punishment. Positive punishments are gonna decrease behavior. For example, you go to the gym and whoever your coach is for the day, they're very aggressive and they're adding something but what they're adding is making you upset. Um, they're kind of yelling at you. Um, that makes it positive because they're adding all that yelling, but it is a punishment because you are not happy that they are yelling at you. Some people like that, but if you're like me, you don't like that. Um, and so this will be a positive punishment. And that punishment is going to decrease behavior. Now, if you're the kind of person who gets motivated by having that coach yell at you, well, then that's going to be different. That's going to be a positive reinforcer for you, and that's going to increase the behavior going to the gym. But if you're anything like me, having someone yell at you while you're trying to do hard work, that, that does not feel great. And so for me, that would be a positive punishment, and it would decrease behavior. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and remember that the best way to contact me is directly through Canvas. I hope to hear from you soon.